You ask a great deal of me, Sam. I know. But I wouldn't be here if it wasn't important, if it wasn't vital. Fine. Just this once, though. In the future, such things will come at a price. Resetting the type is neither quick nor easy. To say nothing of the cost should I be discovered. I shall not forget this kindness. Nor I. His work will see your last little bit of notoriety erased. Come. I'll show you how to leave, now that order's been restored. So, now you've had a chance to see how it all works. Untoward actions will upset the citizens and inevitably lead to the guards being called. Depending on the severity of your transgression, they may simply search a bit before giving up and returning to their post. But should you offend them severely or repeatedly, they'll become much more aggressive in their pursuits. I've shown you three ways to turn the tide. Remove wanted posters, bribe town criers, or visit a printer to create your own propaganda. This feels wrong. Why not just speak to someone and explain my innocence? You can't be serious. We counter one lie with another. Words on paper instantly take... Here we are. Speak with the harbor master and he'll see you home. Thank you for everything, Sam. I promise one day to repay the favor. Oh, I'm counting on it. Like this. Welcome back. You left me in Boston. The training we've done here is all well and good. But experience is a better teacher by far. What of my father? Into the wind, I'm afraid. We have to find him. And we will. After the house has been repaired. But he's out there plotting who knows what. And what would you do when you found him? If you found him. You're a boy with a few months of training. He's a man, full-grown, who spent decades honing his skills. If you're going to stand a chance against the Templars, you're going to need these. Go on before I change my mind. Sir, please! Help! He's going to die! Who? There's no time! Please, come!
Down there! He's just passed under the bridge! <coughs> Help me! Please! <coughs> Someone! Help! <coughs> What this knobbend is trying to say is he's forever in your debt, sir. Who are you calling? A knobbend? You, because you are one. What were you doing on those logs? One of the dangers of lumbering. We've got the camp set up a few rods off of here as we're cutting timber. We're hoping to open a mill in the area. There's a good place not far from the manor on the hill where I'm staying. <laughs> I like you already. We'll have a look. I'll miss the peace and quiet, but we can certainly use the wood. The manor needs a lot of work. That and other things. Meet me at the small shack by the shoreline when you have time. There's something else you need to see. What is it? An asset. Thank you. Thank you. 
Are you all right? I think so. Didn't do much to me aside from a good scare. Blaggards. What did they want with you? My purse, which was meager, and they decided to punish me for their trouble. Silly, really. My tools and equipment were worth a king's share to the right man. In any case, I had best get on my way. It's a long walk to the nearest inn. I thank you again for your kindness. Have you no home? Oh, well, I was a proud resident of Boston until recently, but I'm not a supporter of His Majesty, and, well, I was forced out of my wood shop and home by loyalists. There are plenty around here who could use the services of a skilled craftsman if you were looking for somewhere to settle. Is that right? I may look into that. See you there, old man. I'd have set my home in order if I'd known you'd be calling. The boy's name is Connor. He's here to restore the property. Restore? Restore? Pardon my manners. She's still the fastest in the Atlantic. Sure, she needs some attention. Minor things, mostly, but... With a little affection, she'll fly again. Who is she? Who is she? Why, the Aquila boy, the ghost of the North Seas. The boat. A, a boat? She's a ship boy, and make no mistake about it. I thought you brought him here to restore order. I reckon he's the greenest thing on the frontier. Connor, meet me back at the manor when you've finished here. You said it requires repairs. You able? She does need work. A ship is a she, boy. And yes, I can refit her, but I I'm lacking in the proper supplies. Some, some quality timber would help me get started. I can see to that. How long before it, she, is able to sail again? Just get me the lumber, boy. And I'll... Raise a crew.
There you are. I have something to show you. Come, take a look. What is it? A ledger. It lets us manage the homestead's dealings. And these? Uh, that was years ago. Before the slow fever, before the Templars, before everything collapsed. But that's all in the past. Better we focus on what's in front of us. Take up the ledger, and I'll teach you how it all works. Time passed quickly after that. My days a blur of study, training, and work. What little free time Achilles allowed me was spent learning about the Templars. About Charles Lee and my father. I longed to confront them. To put an end to their schemes. To ensure my people would remain untroubled and free. But I knew it was too soon. That to approach them now would see me killed. All my work would be for nothing. Patience, restraint. These proved the most difficult subjects for me. But in time, I mastered them as well. Days became months. Months became years. And as my skills and knowledge grew, so too did I. Must be Connor. We've been raring to finally meet you. My name's Catherine, and this is Diana. We're the wives of those two blockheads who cut trees. Nice to meet you. We've heard so much of you from the boys. Glad to finally put a face to the name. The pleasure is mine. We were just discussing how nice this bit of territory is. On a river, with nobody upstream. I won't lie, Godfrey's letter had me a little worried. But now that we're here and settled, I must say I'm rather happy. They had us on this plot north of Champlain that was a tangle of rock and bramble. Ugh, horrible place. It's a real treat to be able to walk up the hill and take in the ocean. Your husbands must keep you busy. <laughs> Nothing we can't handle, Connor. 
The boys think they run the show, but the real bosses are right in front of you. I do not doubt it. Come aboard and feast your eyes, boy. No, 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 not the left foot. Never the left foot. Horrible look. Step with your right foot first. She is... solid? Aye. Weatherly and sleek. She'll fetch 12 knots in a stiff gale, near a ship from here to Singapore can outrun her on her best day. What do you say we take her out? Show you what she can do first hand. Where would we go? As it happens, she still needs guns and the officers to command them. We'll launch straight away. <laughs> Don't worry, lad. I'll make sure you sprout good sea legs. All in the mainsail! Get up the rigging! Hand over, fist! Come on, men! Let's get her out where she needs to be! Lad, no time like the present. Come on, come on, she won't bite. You're connected to her now. Listen and feel. She's idle. If you call for half sail, the men will hop to it and she'll pick up. Half sail! Your killer flies again! Do you feel it, lad? Set a course for Martha's Vineyard. We'll find our guns and officers there. She's a nimble vessel, but the faster she goes, the more cumbersome she grows. And the firmer your hand needs to be. Enjoy this stretch of open water before we come upon those shallows. Call for full sail if you like. We need more speed. Full sail! Go get that wind! Wind looks to be shifting. Stay alert, Connor. Dusty winds can be difficult to manage. Fall in to half sail! Fall in to half sail! Now, take us through these shallows. Careful not to run up on them. The sandbars will slow us down, but the rocks will put a hole through a hole. And if you want to make a quick tack, call for half sail. She's more maneuverable then. Mind those other vessels. Hold your tack Reduce to keep your right of way. Rogue wind! 
more speed. Bend them all. Full sail. Cottages. We're close. To half sail. Haul in to half sail. Full sail. Full sail. Go get that wind. Reduce speed. We need to ease off. Half Go sail. sail. No sail. Haul in everything. Drop anchor. We'll go ashore, buy our guns, and find our officers. Oh, hello, Miss Mandy. You're looking every bit as ravishing as I remember. <laughs> After all these years, you sail all the way to the vineyard to pay me compliments. We are looking for David and Richard Clutterbuck. <laughs> nice to see you, too. Robert Faulkner. Where the hell you been? Sorry for leaving like I did, lads, but where I was going, no one could know. You two working much? No. Between contracts at the moment. Well, we're looking for gunnery officers. What would you two say to working with me again? We'd be for getting into a few more scraps. <laughs> <laughs> Good show. The Aquila is a fine vessel. We're fitting all the guns as we speak. Looks like your friend's about to catch a beating. Where is Charles Lee? I don't much care for your tone, boy. Hey, you don't want to be doing that, Biddle. Bobby Faulkner turned to wet nursing. Could you finally realize you're a shite sailor? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not in here, gentlemen. Better still, not at all. Bobby, take your friends and get out! Let's go, boys. Our guns ought to be ready. Come on. The older man is a Templar. Who was he with? A Templar? The young buck was Nicholas Biddle. Nobody. Sails before the mast. Midshipman for the Crown. Are the guns ready? Aye, but we won't jump in over our heads. We'll find a suitable target and show you how they work. We've fitted her with a modest amount of guns to start, but rest assured there's ample room to add more should you feel the need. Looks like a British frigate with half seas over. Should do nicely for a spot of target practice. Bring her round broadside, and when all guns are on target, call fire. Round shot for a start. Make ready, boys! Fire! Reload those ladies! Well done, on, boy! Sir. Now, aim all guns at her bow and do as much damage as possible. Ah, 
<laughs> you are a fast learner. Provided something interests me. Ah, getting a taste for the open sea, are we? We'll make a jack tar out of you yet. Now we should be getting back. The old man is like to have my hide for keeping you out so long. Bring it a half sail, man. Half sail? Why is he shooting at us? Destroying property of the crown, disturbing the king's peace, take your pick! What do we do? No else but to fight back! Sink the bastard! Up sail, men! Use the swivels on him, Captain! No sail! No sail! Swattles another one. Where in the bloody hell did she come from?
I got them. All of them. You get what I need, and I'll give them to you. Simple. You got a ship, could find them all to boot. Who is that man? Him? Some old salt always on about letters he's got from Captain Kidd. Nonsense, really, but he doesn't hurt no one, so I'll leave him be. Talk to him if you fancy, but be warned he'll chew your ear off. Anyway, the Aquila's here for you. If you should get a pang for the open sea, we'll be waiting. Now I implore you to head up the hill before the old man comes out of retirement just for me. You weeks. And not even a goodbye before you left. Sorry. Well, what are you waiting for? Put them on. Once upon a time, we had a ceremony on such occasions. But I don't think either of us are really the type for that. You've your tools and training, your targets and goals. And now you have your title. Welcome to the Brotherhood, Connor. happy to hear there's actually good news for once. Yeah? I've managed to locate a power source, and it's relatively close by. Up for a trip to Manhattan? Is it safe to leave? Abstergo's gotta be looking for us. Obviously it's not safe. Can't exactly sit around here hoping to get lucky though, can we? We need that power source. Besides, I'm sure you can cook up some way to hide our movements. Maybe. The Templars have access to all kinds of satellites and camera systems. We'll need to find a way to mask our digital signature. I can probably camouflage the van, too. But there's not much I can do for us. That's an easy one. Utility companies have assured the public that they're completely prepared for the upcoming solar maximum. Disruptions to service are expected to be minimal. If only they knew. What's this? A remote operated camera. It'll provide us with a feed while you're on mission. This will let us talk to each other. We're almost there, so listen up. The artifact is in an office penthouse in Lower Manhattan. At this time of night, direct infiltration is going to get you noticed. I think we're better off having you drop in from above. What do you mean, above? One, two, three. Yep, reach you just fine. Now why don't you power up the camera? I've got pictures. Running diagnostics. Perfect. I've got a nice, strong signal. Just a heads up. There's no elevator access from here on out. You'll have to get up there the old-fashioned way.
Seriously, Sean? Fuck you. Almost there, Desmond. Once you reach the top of the lit-up crane, you should be high enough to make the jump. Should? It'll be fine. Don't worry. Well, you might want to worry a little. I'm pretty sure she was high when she was running the numbers. <sighs> Sean! A joke! It was a joke! Or was it? Wasn't so bad. So, you must be Desmond. Not exactly what I expected, but I guess your kind doesn't have many options these days. Who are you? Ask your father. Now give me that. I don't think so. Look, I'm not supposed to kill you, but the boss man didn't say anything about fucking you up. So you got to the cap. So who the hell is Daniel Cross? Believe it or not, he used to be an assassin. The assassin, the way I've heard it told, but... It turned out he was a sleeper agent for Abstergo, programmed to infiltrate and destroy the organization. How did he know you were there? We could be compromised. They must have caught me snooping inside their network and sent Cross to see what we were after. If they were aware of our current location, we'd know. Though, I will say this. It doesn't bode very well for future expeditions. I've set up some cameras topside. If anyone shows up, we'll see it. I'd suggest you go see about finding a socket for that power source. Or we can return to Connor if you prefer. 
All the artifacts in the world won't mean a thing without the key. I know everyone thinks I'm being silly, but I can't shake the feeling we're being watched. We are being watched. By Juno. Or some version of her. Do you think it's a recording? Or is she a ghost? Or something else? Is she talking to us the way Minerva talked to Ezio? No clue. I mean, who knows what else they were working on down here? There's still so many rooms we don't have access to. But do you think she's like literally down here, waiting somewhere, still alive? Still alive? That's mental. That I mean she'd be at least 75, 80,000 years old? Oh, powerful, yeah, but not that powerful. They came down here looking for a way to survive. Maybe they found one. Was it weird seeing Cross? What do you mean? It's different for you. You don't know about what happened, I guess. For a long time, he was... important to us. He was a different person. Sean said he was a sleeper agent. Like Lucy. It was different. She made a choice, but Cross... If you read the files... Abstergo just... They... They did terrible things to him. Rebecca? You're lucky. We all are. We have people who care about us, who look out for us. He was all alone, and the people he thought he could trust, they used him. Did you know him? No, but... I knew Hannah. Who's that? She tried to help him. She trusted him. But there was a raid about a year ago. She stayed behind so the others could escape. Tried to reason with him, to see if she could fix things. Well, what happened? What do you think happened? He killed her. That's what he does. That's all he knows how to do. Sometimes it seems like that's all any of us know how to do. Rebecca. I just want to be alone right now. Son, I, uh, I owe you an apology. I, I shouldn't have lashed out like that. You have to understand, I've never been very good at this. Never mind that we live rather extraordinary lives. You know, I kind of liked my ordinary one. You can't escape who you are, Desmond. So I've noticed. Look, it's silly for us to go back and forth like this. I admit. I did a shitty job raising you. I apologize, I'm sorry. But it's important you understand it didn't come from a bad place. You're my son. I love you. I guess I was so busy trying to make sure nothing bad happened, I didn't consider the consequences. Truce. I can't believe it's taken me so long to ask, but... How's Mom? She's not... No, no, no. Your mother is fine. We decided it was safer if we split up for this job. Always assuming the worst. Hm. For good reason. Can I at least say hi to her? I'm sorry, it's too risky. Maybe when we're done. Right. When we're done. Have... have we ever tried to make peace with the Templars? Throughout our history, there have been moments. Several, in fact. But... it's impossible. There are existential differences, insurmountable. If there were to be unity, it wouldn't be a truce so much as a submission. But knowing what's about to happen, wouldn't it make sense to try and talk to Vidic? Come to an arrangement, even if it's only temporary? We'd all be so busy watching our backs, nothing would get accomplished. <laughs> Imagine that. We're more productive at war. Well, have we ever tried sending in someone? Doing to them what they did to us with Lucy? Or Cross? 
We have, and it's never worked. We've sent people who were either too weak and found themselves turned, or too strong and were unable to carry out the charade. I just feel like we all want the same thing. We use the same words, but that's all they are, words. In the end, it all comes down to freedom. We seek it, they detest it. And so there's never an end to the fight. Not until one side is completely gone. Is that even possible? Probably not. Our two groups have existed in one form or another since... Well, since forever. But things can be better than they are. And that's something. Did you look for me, Dad? When I was gone? Every day. Come on. I mean it. Every night I'd look, searching for your name or variations of it, hoping you'd slip up. Abstergo only found you first because they had better access. A few more days and it would have been me. Well, I'm here now. And I'm glad. Do you think Lucy regretted what she was doing? I used to think I knew her well, but clearly that wasn't the case. So I really can't give you an honest answer. She seemed so sincere, though. Like she really wanted to make a difference. Yes, well, when I first met him, I thought the same thing about Cross. It just keeps happening over and over again. What does? Everything. Don't get weird on me, Desmond. No, it, it's fine. I'm fine. Don't worry. All right, then. You should think about getting back in the Animus. We've got to find that key. We should probably get back to Connor. Ah, Desmond, there you are. Can I ask a favor? Maybe. When this is all over, I'd like to try turning the dial back on the Animus. Like, all the way back. To the time of the first civilization. You think it would work? There was no real loss of fidelity when you visited Altair. Then again, that was about a thousand years ago, and I'm looking at going back at least 70,000 more. Sure, I'd be up for it. Be interesting to see what things were like back then. Excellent. I think it would prove most enlightening. So this is how it started. What are you up to? Just brushing up on my American history. Well, I say history. They certainly teach you strange things in the States. Like what? Well, for all the talk of this being a revolutionary war, it was a civil one. Well, not that kind of civil. I mean, there was no America versus Britain. It was Brit on Brit action. And you can clearly see how the whole thing got started. One war gave birth to the other. You mean the Seven Years' War? Exactly. Seems the Crown overspent in its attempt to keep the French out. Wound up with a great deal of debt. Believing that the colonists should help to shoulder the burden, new taxes were created. It was a reasonable request, even if Parliament was rather, well, undiplomatic about it. Well, it's not really fair to tax people for a war they didn't want any part of. What? Didn't want any part of? Did you not notice George Washington with Edward Braddock? He was right there in the middle of it. So here you have the Crown spending who knows how much money to secure a place for the colonists to thrive, and then, when they ask for a little bit of help... Right, look, think of it this way. King George and the colonists, they all go out to dinner, right? And when the bill comes, George asks for them to kick in and pay their share. Fair enough. But keep in mind, he's been taking them out to dinner gratis for decades now. But the colonists, oh no, they insist they only had a glass of water and a side salad. Never mind the table's full of half-eaten food and empty bottles of wine. Now when the king points this out, what do the colonists do? Oh, they flip the table over and they storm out the restaurant. Probably intending to turn later and burn it down. You left out the part where the king pointed a gun at the colonists and asked them to cover dinner for everyone in the restaurant. Right, right, yeah, interesting take. If he pulled out a gun, and I'm not sure he did, it would only have been after the hundredth failed attempt at getting them to pay their fair share. But how do you define someone's fair share? Well, with a war, apparently. I wonder how many other places like this exist. There are dozens of them, all over the world. And somehow no one's ever found one before us. I don't think that's true. Oh? When I was at Abstergo, Vidic talked about silencing discoveries made by non-Templars. And I'm sure Abstergo has dug up plenty. The things they must know. Regretting throwing in with us? <laughs> no. 
scientist. Looking forward to when we can finally trounce those bastards so I can dive into their archives. Oh, I think I've found a lead on another power source. Later, Desmond. I'm in the middle of something very important right now. only awaiting discovery? Or might it be changed? Here we learned the answer, and thought that it might save us. They were used to command, to control, to own. But we soon discovered another use. When enough sat in thrall and were told to believe, their thoughts took on form. What was imagined became real. If a hundred minds could wish away a wall or create a tree, what might a thousand do? Ten thousand? More? Might we change the consensus and will the threat away? We resolved to send one into the sky where it might illuminate us all. Once placed, a sentence would be uttered. Make us safe. In this way, we would change the consensus. We would save the world. But it never came to be. We sent a dozen of them skyward. But there was no way to maintain control. To direct the beam. To enthrall the world. To speak the words. Though this was strange and dangerous, what we tried next was worse. could not find a way, but forward, we could look forward, and so here we sought to see beyond ourselves, and know what was to come. First we watched to learn if our work would succeed, but the answer was always the same, so we moved on to other things, but she remained, the one you call Minerva. In time, she too stopped looking, and instead began to speak. 
She called out across time, in the hopes that you might be saved. She hid messages where none might find them, save for you and those within this place. Fascinating. I'm tired of it. The cryptic warnings, the threats. Just tell us what you want! But they are. We saw the Nephilim there. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. Imagine trying to explain all this to a two-year-old, to a grasshopper. When they said the will of the gods was unknowable, they meant it. Literally. I killed her, you know. I killed Lucy. It was the apple, son. It was Juno. I saw what she was. What would happen if I let her live? I could have stopped myself. I mean, there was a force there. But I didn't have to. I chose to. Desmond. Lucy was going to betray us and take the apple back to Abstergo. I saw the satellite launched. I saw them turn it on and then... It failed. Whatever's on the other side of that door, it benefits Juno. We need to be careful. Good luck, Desmond. These are troubled times. The already uneasy alliance between the Crown and its subjects frays. And behind them both the Templars plot, pulling strings and moving pieces. History dictates they seek order through control. But how will they affect it here? Who supports them? And what conspiracies have they already spun? Kana! All these things I must determine. Spare a moment. For only by of knowing course. my enemy can I hope to Have stop a look. them. What is it? Xingbao, or rope dart, if you prefer. One of the many plans given to us by Shao Yun to... <sighs> Sorry. We'll have to work on this. Ganondogo. Yes, my friend. What brings you here? Is the village all right? For now. What do you mean? What has happened? Men came, claiming we had to leave. They said that the land was being sold, and that the Confederacy had consented. We sent an envoy, but they would not listen. You must refuse! We cannot oppose the Sachem, but you're right as well. We cannot give up our home. Do you have a name? Do you know who is responsible? He is called William Johnson. Where is Johnson now? In Boston, making preparations for the sale. Sale? This is theft! Connor, take care. These men are powerful. What would you have me do? I made a promise to my people. If you insist upon this course of action, seek out Sam Adams and Boston. You'll be able to help. What have you done? When my people go to war, a hatchet is buried into a post to signify its start. When the threat is ended, the hatchet is removed. Uh, you could have used a tree. 